be on in a minute, just inviting some friends. <clears throat> be quiet, I'm live on the air. My goodness. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Uh, give me a minute. I'm almost there. <clears throat> okay. Well, good morning. Um, as you can see, I've changed the, uh, the scenery behind me. And I thought of something yesterday that I want to share with the kids. Um, it's something, hi, Bev, all, all the way from England. My goodness. Um, I thought of something that I, uh, hi, Tom and Laura, um, that I want to share with the kids um, because this is something my brother and I used to do like for hours at a time. No, not that, people. Um, but it's really fun and it's easy to do and it kept us occupied. And to me, it's way more fun than Hangman or Tic-Tac-Toe. Though you could play Hangman and Tic-Tac-Toe too. Let me show you what it is. <clears throat> So it's called dots and lines, and you do this, okay? Am I on? Uh, can you see the dots and lines? Okay. So you do uh, five here, one, two, let's do three here. Okay. Can you see those kind of? Okay. They're supposed to be even, but they're not because I was looking at you. So the first guy, he puts a line here. And then the second guy, person, puts a line here, just randomly. And then he goes, oops, he goes here. Okay, and she goes here. And here, we'll go faster. And here, and here, and here. Okay, so the object, it's a strategy game. It's kind of like um, Battleship, okay? The goal is you don't want to put this one, like let's say this person put one here, and then this person put one here. Well, this person is able to close the square off. Okay, so they get that. So Todd gets this one. Todd keeps on going because he got one, and he gets this one. He can't do any more. Then this person goes here because they're not very intelligent, and Todd gets another one. So that Todd's winning three nothing. And then this person goes here because they're still not intelligent, and Todd gets another one because he did the last one. And this person uh, gets a little smarter and does this one. Then Todd gets stupid and does this one. So this person goes here. That would be Kate. And then Kate can go again, and Kate goes again, and Kate goes again, and Kate ultimately wins one, two, three, four, four to four, so it's a tie. So it's just kind of a fun thing to do. You can play all day um, and kind of get out of your parents' hair. Now, I say get out of your parents' hair, which is a term I keep on using, but then I have good news because I've heard that you kids have been home for five days, so your parents have torn all their hair out already. So you actually, you don't have to worry about getting in their hair because they have just ripped their hair out because you've been here for, uh, you've been home for five days. So anyhow, today's story, uh, first look at my shirt because the story coincides with the shirt. Um, I'm going to confess, I wore this shirt yesterday too, but then Deb did the story about Preston's March for Energy. So I wore the same clothes two days in a row. I didn't sleep in it, and I have showered this morning, but I wanted to put it on again. So the Mia Foundation is in Rochester, New York, and what happened is uh, Herman, I can't even do this. You get it. Herman, who is the pigeon, and he cannot fly, and Lundy, who is the chihuahua, he cannot walk. And they became best friends. They're both in a, a place called the Mia Foundation, which rescues animals who are born with disabilities. And everybody knows my shtick is helping those, help giving a voice to those people who may not otherwise have a voice. So these animals certainly don't have a voice. Um, the Mia Foundation is a nonprofit that uh, helps 
nurse animals back to health. Um, these are not animals that are necessarily just sick, but they're animals that may have been born with a disability. Uh, Lundy and Herman became best friends. Their story has gone worldwide, that it's gone viral. So if you go on the thing, it's called the internet. It's, you know, it's the internet. If you look anywhere on the internet, you'll see Lundy and Herman. Well, I reached out to the Mia Foundation maybe about three weeks ago to see if they wanted to do a book because it's such a tremendous story. And they did. And we found an artist in Canada who I may have mentioned. Her name is Jenna. She does computer art. So she's, uh, she's quite quick. And we got the book put together and launched and it's selling like crazy. And a um, uh, large portion of the proceeds go to the Mia Foundation. So I'm gonna share the book with you. I think the t-shirts they had on sale for a, hello, El Coge Caminos, also another book I've done. El Coge Caminos just joined in. Uh, they are a father-son team out of Springfield, Mass. And uh, they run with each other like Dick and Rick Hoyt do, the Pease Brothers, a lot of these uh, disabled running groups do. Um, hello, Mr. El Coge Caminos. One quick question. Yesterday I cut in and out a lot. Can you give me a thumbs up? Am I, is my, am I coming through clearly? Can I have a couple pluses or, or yeses? I see one, two, so I guess three. Oh, those are loves. Ooh, who sent me love? <laughs> uh, probably my wife. Um, so anyhow, this is Lundy and, um, and Herman, and uh, the story is actually called um, The differently abled friendship heard around the globe. Uh, again, I got to do the commercial part. Uh, all my books are available at civinmediarelations.com. Hi, Elizabeth. I want to thank um, a couple people from Spencer who purchased several books yesterday. I would say your names, but I don't know if they're gifts or not, so I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but thank you. So the book starts off and it goes, aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know that, so it goes on flying anyhow. Big lesson there as we talk about. Just because somebody says you can't do something, if you're not listening or don't pay attention and you try really hard, you can probably still do it. That's a huge lesson. <clears throat> and the Mia Foundation dedicates this book to Mia's angels, our unsung heroes who make the Mia Foundation one of the finest non-for-profit international organizations that care for animals. Whether it's fostering, transporting, fundraising, or donating, our angels give up their precious time and resources to help with our mission to help animals with birth defects. We humbly dedicate this book to you. All right, let's cut to the chase. <clears throat> they say birds of a feather flock together as they travel across the sky, but friends become quite limited when you're a bird that cannot fly. A pigeon's defined by the crowd they keep, who they fly with and who they know, spend time together in their quest for food and bombing statues down below. But some birds are born with differences, and they peck through life disabled. Their wings don't flutter, they're pigeon-toed, and before long, they are labeled. Let's follow the flight of a special bird as we take you through this sermon of one such pigeon that could not fly, who goes by the name of Herman. About a year ago at a car dealer, perhaps shopping for a firebird, see what I did there? Came a quiet coo from Herman, so soft it was hardly heard. For three days in the parking lot, Herman wouldn't move from the tar, noticed by a salesman with a bright sport coat as he tried to sell a car. His boss said, shoo him out of here. If we don't move cars, they'll fire us. He may just have a brain injury or perhaps a nasty virus. <clears throat> He'd heard of Darwin's theory 
when he got his education about survival of the fittest, but there must be a foundation. Called one up in Rochester, named for a Chihuahua whose name was Mia. He spoke to Sue and Gary Rogers. He'd rush the bird to see her. The Mia Foundation rescues animals who are born with birth defects, give food and love and a fighting chance with the donations they collect. They brought Herman to roost at Mia's and nothing could be finer. But our story continues quite far away in Uncasa in Carolina. See what I did there too? He's a Chihuahua. An infant Chihuahua who cannot walk, so minuscule they cannot see us, with a tiny yelp that had an accent, little Lundy barked buenos dias. He arrived at just six ounces, fit in the pocket of a shirt, with legs that could not function, he'd be trampled in the dirt. Hi, Terry Harvey, how are you? Some like Lundy are put down and they write their epilogue, but it's never the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Now think about that. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. For all you little chillins, think about that. And I'm not talking about fighting like fist fighting. I'm talking about your heart, your dedication, your soul. It's not your size. It's the amount of heart you have inside that determines whether you're going to win the proverbial fight. He's man's le best friend. Let's rescue him. Despite his defective paws, they flew him up to Mia's too. They fix creatures who have flaws. I think my grandkids are watching. Hi, Addie. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Scarlett. It's Grandpa Todd. <laughs> Lundy was placed in a baby crib, woke from a three-day long siesta. He saw the other animals, yelped, let's have a fiesta. Partakes in physical therapy. He's fed, loved, and adored, but has great trouble walking with a damaged spinal cord. Trish Smith, your children are still in bed, my goodness. And Rob Tayshoff, go SU. Though the two of them seem better off, I have a small confession. Even animals with disabilities can struggle with great depression. The Rogers gave Herman the finest seed and Lundy tasty kibble, but Herman wouldn't peck his food and Lundy wouldn't nibble. It's my favorite line. Hard to find a word that rhymes with kibble. <clears throat> then one day came a miracle, and it happened quite by chance. When Sue placed the two of them side by side, their hearts began to dance. Lundy wagged his tail, and Herman began to flutter. The somber moods they'd both been in had melted just like butter. Sue ran and got her camera. Gary grabbed his finest lens. The world must see what they just saw, a pigeon and dog as friends. She posted on social media. The post spread far and wide. The two never looked so happy with their best friends by their sides. Here comes the lesson part. You ready? With every Todd story comes a lesson. I know you really didn't want to learn today. You just wanted to be entertained, but I'm a father, so I got to teach lessons too. The lesson the two are teaching us, though disabled from their birth, a puppy can't walk and a pigeon can't fly, made it all around the earth. A pigeon and a puppy, despite defective parts, when two species can fall in love, it can only touch our hearts. The end. Can I have a bunch of hearts? Bunch of hearts. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Press the hearts. Uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, should we do it on weekends?
I think we should. I'll check in tomorrow at 10. Uh, we'll read tomorrow, oh, the story of um, Daisy. If every day was a Daisy day, uh, it's about a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. Oh, look at all those hearts. My goodness, my goodness. Um, it's about a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. Tons of hearts. Um, and uh, they're a therapy dog, so they keep people feeling calm and relaxed and nice and um, not wigged out. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. I got to get back to work. Um, have a wonderful day. And if your parents still had hair, because they have already pulled it out, stay out of your parents' hair, okay? Uh, and don't forget the, the line and, um, and dot game. You can make it even bigger so you can play all day. Um, but uh, that's all I have for today. So thank you, and uh, keep calm. Go out, get some fresh air, and that's all I got. Thank you.